Okay, today is May 29th, 2017. I'm Patricia Shafarsik, and we're at 190 Anza Street at the Museum of Local History in Fremont. And uh, I am speaking with, can you give me your name, please? Marion Hempel Spino. Spino. Thank you very much. Uh, we're going to be here today and you're going to talk about uh, the time when y you grew up and lived in Niles. And I guess what I'd like to start off with is just asking uh, how, sort of like the history of your family and how they came to be in Niles. Well, my father was trained as a landscape gardener, botanist, arborist in Germany. He was actually a naval cadet, be a German submarine officer. But after World War I, they were forbidden to have that. So they started teaching their cadets to be master gardeners, in other words. So he graduated with that. He had a job opportunity to go to Barcelona. But he had an uncle living in San Francisco that was a captain for P&O lines. He had a flat in Shanghai and a flat in San Francisco. And he said, why don't you come here? So he did. He arrived in San Francisco, spoke no English, but he took English classes morning and evening so he could learn very quickly. Then he started out with some estate jobs, and he did really well. And then he started working for the mills and Crocker estates and eventually went on a tramp steamer to South America, where they brought specimen plants to put in their greenhouses. Because in the 20s, people didn't really travel, but they walked through their greenhouses, and they would walk through and say, this plant is from Brazil, this plant is from um, Argentina. And you sort of had uh, your dinner guests walking through them. So he did that. And then he worked at Livermore Sanitarium for a while. And I know in those days, there was um, seven miles of hedge, and he had a garden crew of about 20, and there was acres and acres of land there. Where, where was this? In Livermore. In Livermore. Livermore Sanitarium. Okay. And that's when um, we didn't have a lot of things for people to go in those days, but it was like a spa also. And I remember from Crew Winery, Grandma Kruge was there, and we called her Grandma Kruge, and she would walk around. We lived on the property, and she used to always bring us little crocheted things that she had done. There was some professional baseball players that were there, and um, it was um, nice living there to a certain extent, but it was always hard when you're growing up to say you live at the Livermore Sanitarium. <laughs> Where was that located? It was on College and L in Livermore. Now it's it's gone, and it's just housing there. But it was near College and L. So your dad came. When did your dad come to the United States, and what was his name? His name was Wilhelm Hermann Karl Hempel, and he arrived in 1925. Okay, and then. Um, he must have gotten married somewhere in he between met my there. My mother in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. She lived on De Visadero. Her she name? Was, she was. Her name was Winifred Gage, and she was working for a pediatrician there. And essentially, they both um, worked at the Livermore Sanitarium for a while, and they married. So they met at the sanitarium. Yes. My oh, mother okay. Was a nurse. Okay, got it. So, but they both lived in San Francisco, and then they uh, went to the sanitarium to work. And, and you were born? In Livermore. In Livermore while they were working at the sanitarium? Yes, yes. Okay. In, in 39. You were born in 1939. Yes. And shortly um, after that, World War II broke out. My father was a German citizen. Mm. So they decided the best thing to do is move to, we moved to Berkeley, and he started working for Kaiser Shipyards. So he would have a government um, defense job, welding ships and things. So he was a welder on the ships, and he would take his lunch, 
And since he spoke with a very German accent, sometimes his lunch was destroyed by the other workers. Mm. We had a swastika painted on our door. So it wasn't a good thing um, being German. My mother would always say we were English. She was half German and half English. And my best friend at the time was a Chinese family that lived next to me. Because when I started kindergarten, and they found out that my Ger my father was German. I didn't have a lot of friends there. But I went to preschool at Berkeley, starting at three. They had an early childhood education program for PhD students there. Mm. So my mother thought, that's a great opportunity. I can bring my child there. We lived a couple blocks away. She pushed me in the tailor tie. And by the time I went to kindergarten in Berkeley, I could read already. And it had beginning math. I also started my violin lessons at three. So it was a problem though when I went to kindergarten because there was all of the kids' names on the board and they asked you to pick out your name. And so I said something probably like, you know, uh, of course this is my name. And my mother had to tell the teacher, well, she reads already. <laughs> so they didn't know what to do. So I ended up hemming dish towels, which were made out of flour sacks. So the teacher would look, look at me hemming flour sacks, and if they, she would take the string out, I could do it again, because I already knew things. So when the war was over, shortly after that, we moved back to Livermore. And um, I skipped a grade in school there. And I in, went, in Livermore? Yes, in Livermore. And I remember crying because I came home and told my mother that they don't wear shoes at this school. At Berkeley, people were better dressed. It was colder. So in Livermore, they didn't, a lot of people were barefooted. So, um, but I adjusted and um, we moved, we had school at the radiation lab until, you know, I moved to Niles. In 1950. So in 1950, are you an only child? No, I have one sister. She was born in Berkeley. Okay, and is she older or younger than you? She was born in 1940. Mm -hmm. One year older, yes. uh, younger. Yes. And her name? Her name is Sigrid. 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 Okay. It was named after a Norwegian movie star. So in 1950, you you moved to Niles. Why did? Why did, you, why did you move to Niles? Because my father was working at the sanitarium and he worked for this one doctor. And he basically ran, you know, a crew of probably 20 people there. And he aged out and retired. And they hired a younger person there. And the um, charge nurse was given permission to pick flowers in the garden. And my father questioned why she was picking flowers, because he would have an order to do so many dining rooms and so many things. So when he, the, the new person said, I don't see any reason why Nina Pauline can't pick flowers in the garden. And my father must have said something about, well, you know, we have an order daily on where the flowers are supposed to be. And so he quit his job immediately right then and said, well, I can't work here anymore. So of course he had to tell my mother, you know, you're, we have company housing and it was pretty nice. They came and did our laundry. We had a laundry basket. They picked up our laundry. We could get food in the commissary if we wanted. It was pretty nice, you know, life living there. My mother worked there also. So they had to find a place to live. And I know that um, he went to, checked out Atherton. And then he saw this place at this, um, in Niles. And my mother was the one that pushed for Niles because I could continue going to Livermore for my violin lessons. So we drove Niles Canyon every Saturday for my violin lessons. Oh, okay. They also had company housing. So we lived in a, a house by the railroad tracks and when we first moved there, I thought the train was going to come right through my bedroom. Mm. It was so noisy. And after a while, I didn't even hear it anymore. But we lived there. 
So you moved to California. Where did you move to? Um, you moved to International Kitchen. International in Kitchen in Niles. Oh, okay. And Go ahead. Lived there. So tell me about when you first moved there and what what was International Kitchen like? Well, they wanted their mission was expand for marketing of plants in a greenhouse. They had a large pottery shop. It was the largest one west of the Mississippi River. The pottery, lots of it was made right here in California. Franciscan Ware, Vernon Ware was made up in Lincoln, California. They have a special clay there that's very good for pottery. The pottery shop was very big and very popular, and they also had a dining room. And by adding the nursery, the clients, many of them came from San Francisco, Montclair, Piedmont District, and Oakland to come to the country for the day. And they would purchase something, a plant from the greenhouse, usually something from the pottery shop, and then they would have dinner in the dining room. The, everything in the dining room was cooked on site. If there was jam on the table, the jam was made on site. If there was a horseradish sauce, it was made on site. And I know because my eyes used to water from helping to make that. And pickles were made on site. Um, Sodality Meat Market in San Jose delivered their meat every week. And they cooked turkeys fresh, roast lamb fresh, um, roast ham. Everything was cooked. The Austrian baker baked everything fresh for the day. He came in at 4 o'clock in the morning. And anything that wasn't sold in the dining room that day was given to the employees. So we had really good cheesecakes and pies and things that didn't sell in the dining room. The chef was Filipino, and he made the best lamb curry that, from the roast lamb that didn't sell in the dining room. One of the specialties was pheasant chicken. And I think this has something to do with Kimber Farms because it was a half breed between a pheasant and a chicken. Mm. And that was the most popular thing, and that was what they were noted for. And um, I'm not sure, but I believe it had something to do with Kimber Farms because somehow it was crossbred, and they, that was their, one of their most popular dishes. Mm -hmm. um, I forget now how many people the dining room sat, but I know from working there as a hostess, it was a long way of seating everybody working your, you know, six or eight hour shift. And um, the people, the waitresses, they all wanted their stations filled. And if as a hostess you take somebody to the wrong station, that particular server would let you know about that. Were you the hostess? Pardon? Were you the hostess? Sometimes, yes. Oh, okay. Not so all the time, but when I was in school, I worked as a hostess. Before mm -hmm. that, I worked in the pottery shop. When I first started in the pottery shop, I was just opening boxes. And we used to put the price on there when it came out of the box and then mark through it and then put the lower price on there. It was a good marketing tool. And then I got to decorate the tables in the pottery shop, which was a fun thing to do. And um, I think that the people really enjoyed their visit to the kitchen while everything was homemade. And then um, Irma Corner and Harry Corner started it. He was of German descent from Texas, and she was Hungarian. She lived on Walnut, they moved uh, to Walnut Way. And she made the best, um, best looking strudel dough I ever saw. And when I was living, going to school in Niles, it really wasn't that important for me to know how to make strudel. But I still remember her strudel dough looking like a tablecloth. And she spread it on her table like a tablecloth. And I never learned how to do that, which is not, you know, now I wish I did, but it wasn't of interest then. But um, I think growing up in Niles, we would go to Sletton's department store and they had good yardage. My mother used to buy yardage there and so. And uh, we used to bypass all the bars. There was a lot of bars downtown Niles. And my friend Virginia Lammy, who was from Niles but moved to Newark, her father was a foreman at the steel mill 
and he used to go every Friday. And from what I understand, that the different departments at the steel mill had the different bars that they went to. Oh. So when I asked him how come there were so many bars, he said, well, you know, you went to, we went to this bar and then this other department went to another bar. So it was sort of like that, I think. Like a social thing. Yeah, like a social thing. And then I did date uh, Coy Odom, who lived up in Niles Canyon. And he had about 10 or 12 traps set there. And he would empty the traps on Friday and bring them down to the Chinese restaurant, which was next to Matt, Helen McElvain's house. So where was this, it was, it was uh, on the main street? Yeah, yeah. There was okay. a Chinese restaurant on the main street near Helen McElvain's, right down from Shuckles. And he would bring, a tra bring all the, whatever he caught in the traps, the Chinese restaurant would give him 25 cents. So are you talking like a squirrel and oh, any, yeah, whatever rabbits, else? Squirrels, possums, you know, raccoons, whatever was running around, you know, <laughs> it didn't make any difference. It was the catch of the day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, but you know, if you had 10 traps, that's $2.50. And it was a quarter to go to the movies. And it was a nickel for jujubes or sodas or anything. So I went to movies with him a couple times, and it would de be depending on how successful the traps were, whether we got, you know, how many candies or how many popcorns we got. Sometimes if the traps didn't do well, you just got, you know, you got, went in and just got a Coke, one thing. But if the traps did really well, then, you know, you could buy more things, right? <laughs> so I remember that. Who, what, was this, what was this person's name? Koi Odom. Koi? Mm -hmm. How do you spell that? C O Y. C O Y Odom. Mm -hmm. And his family lived up in. Up in the canyon. Up quite a ways out into the canyon on the left side. Okay. So. Interesting. Go ahead. This is great. So, anyway, uh, <laughs> that was my dating experience, you know. <laughs> and then my seventh grade in Niles Grammar School was in a Quonset hut. Was near in the, the grammar school? Mm -hmm. In Niles Grammar School, my seventh grade, we had a Quonset hut off the field, and the seventh grade class was held there. So because there was not enough room inside, so mm -hmm. we had our, I went to school in a Quonset hut. When I was in Livermore, I had gone to school in the, ra the radiation lab because the, the war was over, so we did that. And then a Quonset hut in Niles. And um, for Valentine's Day, I was given a box. This my eighth grade class. I got to go to the the real school school in Niles. I graduated from the Quonset Hut to the regular school. And for Valentine's Day, I was given a chocolate box of hearts candy from uh, Tony Chivers. So that was my first, you know present on Valentine's Day. And of course, I couldn't take it home because I didn't want to tell my mother you know, mm -hmm. that's what mm -hmm. I got. You know. So I left it in the desk, and of course, it pretty much disappeared. You know. <laughs> it's still unknown now who sampled my chocolates, but that was my um, first you know, Valentine's Day present was then. So, so uh, go ahead. So then during the summer, um, between uh, I went to Roseville, California, and worked the summer for the International Kitchen because they bought a pottery shop in Roseville. And I stayed there for the summer. We worked in the pottery shop. You were in eighth grade? Pardon? Summer of eighth grade, after eighth grade? I think it was the summer between my freshman and the sophomore year. Sophomore year, OK. And it was on a corner up in Roseville. And in the middle of the night, we, the, we, we had a room behind the pottery shop. There was a car, the guy was drunk, and he drove right into the glass of the pottery shop. So that lots of things were broken. Mm -hmm. So I spent a lot of time picking up broken things there. Right. And I did plant a watermelon because it was very hot in Roseville. And I was so proud that I told everybody and tried to show them how big my watermelon was, that I was getting closer to the time that I was going to leave to come back to Niles. And the night before I left, 
to come home, somebody stole my watermelon. Oh. <laughs> so I figured that was because I bragged too much. <laughs> so, but I don't know how long they kept the pottery shop, but they did have it for a while. So I, I wanted to ask a couple more things about International Kitchen. Uh, how many employees were there and how many lived on the property? Well, they had the upstairs, the chef, the sous chef, um, probably half a dozen lived upstairs in the building. We had a separate house. In, in what building? Of the International Kitchen had an upstairs where the, some of the employees lived upstairs. Oh, so the, the restaurant was downstairs and upstairs was? The upstairs was more over the pottery shop. The dining room, I think, was more, was to the side. Oh, I see. And so maybe six people or six yeah, families that, lived yeah. up there and then you lived separately? We lived in the, uh, in the separate building that at one time was a chicken um, house. So it was very long, and nobody had lived in it until we moved there. But they quit raising chickens, and they made a house out of it. So it was long and narrow, and um, they put flooring in there, and they put walls in there, and a bathroom. And uh, we moved in there and um, lived there. But nobody had lived there before us. And your dad was a, a, a master gardener for them? Yes. Yes. And so, can you describe what the what the grounds looked like? Well, when we moved there, there was just just pretty much just a lawn, and he built a big outside the dining room to view the dining room. He built a big pond and a waterfall, and I, it was uh, pictured in Sunset Magazine. And he put in a lot of flowers and hedges and things, so people could walk around. And the main thing was he did a greenhouse that was had sellable things there. And um, he made pathways and things around the buildings so that people could walk around. And um, we had a, a row of oranges that they could walk in between the row of oranges and things if they wanted to make the people f spend a day there, which was very popular at the time. Mm -hmm. so. OK, so yeah. I I didn't have that pictured. And so, um, do you know when International Kitchen opened? No, no. But they were pretty po popular when your father came in there. When they, they hired him after they were established, and uh, our man Harry Corner hired him. It was his mission to do that. And he, you know, he did that, and then um, they moved on. He moved, they moved to Newark, and then he did the park at Glenmore Homes. So your, your mother and father moved on, is that what you were saying? Yes. Or? yes. So, okay, how long did they work there, and did your mother work there too? My mother didn't work there. She worked at the Dr. Enos, Dr. and Mrs. Enos Rest Home on Mission <coughs> Boulevard.